Welcome to I Love Stocks and I want to go over my EV car watch list and discuss a trade a trade that I made yesterday that uh, I think a lot of seasoned traders make and it would help a lot of insight for all the beginners out there that are, are trading right now and that was through the Tesla stock. You know Tesla had a, little pull, a lot of stocks, the EV market had quite a few pullbacks yesterday. And I got into the Tesla trade here. Ah, Jim, come on. There we go. I got into the Tesla trade. I was telling the room, I said, we might have a nice little pullback here in the pre-market. First thing, we'll have a nice little knife. We'll have a nice little pullback. And I'm going to pull this up. And this is the kind of trade that we made. I'm going to show you the, the bigger scheme of things. And I wanted to do a fast scalp pre-market because I knew we were going to have a nice little bounce up. And then a pullback maybe, but I didn't know we were going to have a fake out for another re-entry. And this was a great trade to trade Friday, Tesla was. So I got in the trade. I told the room exactly how I was going to play it, that I was going to catch the knife first thing in the morning. Now this is a one-minute candle. And when this candle had that nice little breakout and pulled back and found support, I jumped right into the trade first thing. And the trade was right here at 695, and it was at the 560 strike. And if you look at that 560 strike now, that was on the 27th. That was on this one here, that 560. Look at that right now, and that still, I mean, that's a good 250 percent increase. Well, I got out. I wanted to get out of the trade in and out real fast, and this is kind of how I did it. Let's get back to that chart. I got in it right down here at the bottom of this candle. And that price right about 830, right when the market opened. I got in it right at 695. I let it bounce up and then that first pullback, I jumped right in it. Then I had the confirmation after that third minute came in. So what I was going to do, I was getting ready to sell it. On the fourth minute, I was going to go ahead and get out of the ticker. And then I realized that this candle was good too. So I accidentally pushed, I was going to sell it once it broke this candle right here and jumped into this one. So I got right into it and I pushed the wrong button. I pushed the buy button and bought another one. I bought another one at 1040. So here I am at 695 and 1040 and I wanted to hurry and get out of the trade. And this time I had two of them and it popped up one more time. And then that last pop up, I got out of both of them at 1095. So I was still able to make money. $55 on this one second scalp but all in all I wanted my game plan was and this was the way I was going to trade it and it kind of came out that way I was going to go ahead and buy the first one and then uh, if it went on up I was going to go ahead and sell it now if it went ahead and dipped on down I was going to buy another one below this first one minute candle so I was prepared to buy another one if it was going to go on down. Then I forgot that I had that buy order in. And I safely assumed that when I pushed the trigger up here to sell, that I was going to get out of it. <clears throat> Instead, I bought another one. So I got right out of the trade. Right Once it popped, I said, man, I'm out of both of these. And then we went ahead and dipped on back down to this support level here that we started out with pre-market. And that was right around that 547 area. I want to go ahead and jot that in here because I think that'll be some kind of importance when we start playing the scalps on this because that's where I am on this trade right now. But that's kind of how I made the trade. I got in it initially, then I was going to sell it right here. And when that happened, it went ahead and I bought another one. And then I sold both of them up here at $10.95. So that was a good $400. $50, $60 trade right there in a matter of four minutes. And then I went ahead and scalped it for the rest of the day in my other account. Now I'm personally going to start me a new challenge account. It's called Washboard Gems Options Challenge. And I spent all year this year with Vegas' support and assistance and help and motivation. And I want to give it, repeat that again with Vegas' support of talking me into doing the options. I'm really thankful for that. And I want to try to my next year's challenge in 2021 is to run this EV car watch list and try to make a thousand a day by the end of by the middle of uh, next year, which I think it'll probably hit that goal sooner. 
because I just love reading charts. So let's go ahead and check this out on a yearly and see where we are here with Tesla. And then I'm going to go ahead and go through a little bit more. See, I think we had that lower support right down here, right around the $500 area. So that's where our strong buy, if we do ever knife back, we're going to create a new channel. And that 502, and I've mentioned that many a times when I've been on here about that 502 level, that that was a solid resistance to break. And we did break out of that last week. Let's go ahead and pull up the 20 day and see if I can find anything else in here. You see where we had this ascending triangle right there at 502. I'm always talking about chart patterns. The next resistance is going to be right around that 518 to this 523. And then you got another breakout here at 533. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. <clears throat> I would think we were going to take it to like 584 is my reasonable resistance on 584. But now I think we're going to start to develop a sideways track a sideways uh, horizontal pattern for probably next week or maybe have a nice little breakup long next year we're going to go back to a thousand but for right now I want to carry this 502 area as a very strong support and we're going to find a pivot point in this channel this week and the resistance that we're going to have to break and I'm going to magnify this up on the hour I think that resistance level is going to be right around I mean, get perfect 576, somewhere in that area. I'm going to bring us up to daily one minute. Try to find a couple places where I think we can start creating a little support area, a little pivot point area. And I'm looking right about in here. I'm going to raise the bar on my support level. Probably to right, right about in here. Right at, what did I got this at? 563.79. <clears throat> this horizontal line on this channel right here, I got one trying to find an equilibrium, and I think I've got it right here. I want to make that solid support with a red line. See, I got that on the yearly, but I like that, and I'm going to make this big. And I should probably move that support bar up above that, which I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it to right about in here. I want to be alerted before we hit this support level. This is what I've learned from Trend Spider, and I've learned it through history of repeated trades. If you have like a certain target right here, they call it a force field or uh, something kind of like 564.58, I want to build a little buffer zone, and I want to look for another place where I think that a resistance was made, and that's going to be right around this 565.18 area. So I'm just trying to find places where I think we're going to buy us, have us a little buy. See, here's another little channel of support that lasted for resistance that lasted for about 15 minutes and finally ended up breaking out. I'm going to try to find an equilibrium in that channel, and that's going to be right there at 566.60. Let's see what we got here on the daily. So this pivot point for right now is going to be that 564.58. It's going to be our kind of solid support. I got an alert set at 565.18, strong buy down here right around the 560 area. And see, we can touch down to these higher wicks right in here, right about where I had that exit. So I'm going to put another little spot right in here between that 558.30 and 560.28. There's my buffer zone down there. And here's my buffer zone for that first support right here at the 565. Now see, we can pull back to this double bottom here. And we can pull back to this double top. So I'm going to make all three of these support levels. The first one being 574.37, 569.16, 566.60 with a strong buy in this channel with that horizontal line on that triangle, no lower than 564.58. And that's going to be Tesla. Let's take a couple more looks. We know the reason why we had the pullback. And, and, a lot of the, and a lot of them went down with it. But always remember that Tesla is my bread and butter. So I'm going to be looking at volume. And here's another good one that we've been watching real closely. It was also affected, as you can see, with that news. Pulled back pre-market, 48.35. Created a nice little rebound. You had a chance to get in it down here at support level. 
at 49.27. How did I come up with that? Let's take a look. See, I'm always drawing these channels in here of resistance. We had this triangle right here, this ascending triangle. Then we had this here kind of wedge pattern. We had this high right here. So yeah, that was a beautiful time to jump in this trade and run it back up to resistance level on the 20 day. And this is how I'd find resistance. When I say hard, I'd look for that previous peak we had at 53.88. So we can pull back again to the support level at 49.27 for a strong buy. Anything below that is going to be a real strong buy. And resistance to breaks at 53.88. Now it's Nile. Keep that on your watch list. You know, another one we like to watch on here is that XPEV. It's had a nice little pullback here in the past couple of days. Kind of created another descending triangle. I like it to hold this support area right in here. I'm going to clear this chart out. And we're going to start fresh so you can see. It's already broke out of my other one down here. That support level is right in here. Bam. I'm going to put that right there. Then we got another big engulfing candle down here and this strong buy down here at this ascending triangle that we had right in here. I'm always saying pit, pay attention to these chart patterns. Here we had an ascending triangle and it did break out of that. They're easy to spot if you get used to them. Here we had the three white soldiers consolidated most of the day and then had another breakout. Another ascending triangle, bam. Then we had the double top and it finally failed. Come back to that support level. So here's your three lower supports and the resistance. And if we were going to watch this trade, I need it to break 64.75 before I'd want to jump in it up to this next resistance level of around 66.81. Or I definitely want to look at the trade at 56 and take it back up to 62. Epex. That's another one on the watch list. Keep it on watch. We got plug. A blink is another good one. I had a couple bears trying to question me on my pullback call on blink on Twitter or on stock twits. I hope you're watching this video right now. We did pull back to my 2422 support level and it bounced on up. You had a nice little scalp for a buck 20 right there and it pulled on back again. Got to try to find an equilibrium in this channel right here and that's going to be right there at 2504 did call that first buy at 2504 and you could have ran it on up and she pulled back to my lower support at 2422 i think we're going to find an equilibrium in here and start to create a sideways horizontal uh, support channel that needs to consolidate and that's blink same as plug plug had a nice little pullback on all the news all my EV stocks pulled back. I also want to look at Workhorse. I think some news came in about it. I'm always pulling up that news, seeing if there's anything in here that contribute to the runs or the pullbacks or any kind of news that I'm watching. And I'm constantly, when I'm doing this, I'm constantly going over here and I'm doing this. I'm going through it. I'm looking for momentum. I'm looking at the tape. I've got the tape set up right over here to where I can watch time and sales come in. And I was constantly, and Tesla was on my mind. I knew how I was going to play it. Played it perfect. I wish I'd have kind of held on to that trade there. I could have probably made at least 20, 30 grand on that trade alone. Instead, I scalped it all the way up. And I'll play it all the way. You know, I don't think, I think we're at a buffer zone. And we need to find a horizontal line on Tesla. So plug... You know, I like to look at the news, like I say. They're always Biden team. It's green energy. So this is another catalyst for these stocks to start running on the EV market. And I do believe 2020 is going to be a real good year, I'm telling you. 2021. So resistance we got to break on plug is going to be this 2631. I want to pull up the 20-day. That's where I get most of my vision on these breakouts. Yeah, this is right in here is a solid support level we're going to turn that into a red line we need to elevate my horizontal support level and i'm going to turn this into a three three bar support strong buy at that 2544 area 
Now I did have a, a stronger buy down here at the 2444. We didn't make it down to it. That's where we had that ascending triangle breakout. But we did pull back to that previous high we had here. Now it's going to become a support level. Got to see that 2544 hold. And 2442 is going to be a strong buy plug. I love to plug it in. Let me see. Workhorse. I want to look at workhorse. And then I've got another one. Where they all had the same kind of pullback pattern. And we found an equilibrium. It did pull back to my 2557. And bounced right up off that support level. I want to go ahead and see what we got here. Get a better look at it. Yeah, we got an equilibrium right in here at this support. Right around 2721. So that's where I'm going to put the new kind of like pivot point support area that I like to see hold. I'm doing that because we pulled back right here. It's like a pivot point. So if we pull back to that 20, what I hate, 27, 21 area, that's going to be a buy. Yeah, exactly. And then a strong buy down here at 2666. And then don't keep that 2557 out of your mind. And the resistance to break is going to be adjusted from that 2842 to 2833. That's going to be the resistance to break on workhorse. Well, that's just a few of the EV watch list. Let's see if we had any real big losers in here. Index, Nikola. I'm not going to play around with Nikola for now. Not until I find something out about the GE deal. TANH was a bottom play that we called at 184. It bounced down there again. I think it bounced there the other day. If we look at it, we had a double bottom. So it's just going to find an equilibrium and find resistance at 236. TANH. Keep it on watch. It's a money maker for the penny land. And WWR. We got FUV. That's it. You know, all the ones that were in the green, keep an eye on them today. You can stop these videos at any time. Check out my little watch list here. Remember, I always play it on volume. Sometimes I weed them out, but I want to keep these all on here for right now. I always like to look at the volume highs, and I like to look at the percentage lows and losers. And that is it for I Love Stocks. Never forget... Hit that icon over here to our little Twitter site. Hit the follow button. Miss Vegas is posting alerts in here. She's a great tape reader. We also want to go ahead and check out the, um, uh, let me go back to the website. We have our stock twits. Follow us on there if you do have a stock twits account. Hit that follow button. I think the last post in here, I said the health benefits from reduced air pollutions due to an increasing share of EVs in the world outweigh the climate benefits we always got to think about our health first i've had a little health scare myself with high blood pressure so i've got to kind of change my routine around so always remember take care of your health first and everything follows i love stocks